How is everybody this morning? Goody, good out there. How's Anthony doing? All right. Very good. The rumor mill is alive. Weekend. Is it? With you. Is it cranking I, in oh. full force? Oh, boy, is it cranking. I was on Laszlo's show um, over at XM on Saturday night. Yeah. Hung out with all them. That was fun. Patrice called and yelled at me and called me a racist. Why is he calling you a racist this time? Uh, because I never, ever have been on his show. Uh, and I went on Laszlo's show. So he, you know, decided that that was being racist. Because Laszlo, of course, is lily white. And uh, he was yelling at me. And then a couple of things might have come out about Because uh, Patrice does a great show on relationships. Right. And uh, a couple of things might have come out on relationships and things. And well, there are uh, p- yeah. there there are people out there. I was reading some of the rumor mill, and some people are thinking it's a it's a it's a bit. It's a bit. Some people are uh, just people in general are very confused and trying to figure it out. Ah, the confusing part of Anthony's uh, relationship. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Well, I I guess I can confirm it. Um, there are rumors out there. <laughs> 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 wow! What are you willing yes, to say today? I, I, I'm following your lead on this. I live alone in my big house now. That's it. So there it is. It's Little a- Jack Jack is gone. Little Jack Jack. You're very sad that a cat. Oh yeah, is and, gone. And my girlfriend. <laughs> Are you sad that she's gone, too, or just that the cat's gone? Well, Opie, it's never good when, uh, you know, a relationship breaks up and you never blah, 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 blah. <laughs> um, you know, ah, happens. You just kind of, you know, you, you get through it. There are those, you know, moments where you're just kind of sitting there in the house going, this is a big, lonely house. <laughs> But you know, for the most part, it's it's uh, I don't know, it's kind of it's kind of cool. What's the worst part of it? The worst part of it is looking at my laundry piling up. <laughs> no, I no, no need to wallow in emotionalism. <laughs> <answer>. <laughs> he's, no, he's just the worst. I um, I I also have to figure out how the hell she she did that whole uh, pea pod thing ordering. Uh, groceries online. <laughs> yeah, but you could, you could like, you could get people to do all that stuff. No, I have people that do enough of the things. Like, but I need like Alice the maid. Like, I need an Alice the maid. So get Alice the maid. There aren't any. Get an assistant. They're all, uh, um, uh, I can't speak their language. Now, um, uh, I got a few questions if we're. You're a maid, though. If we're talking about nice. this. First of all, you were, you were with your girl for what, eight years? Uh, something around like there. some, yeah. I'm just putting it. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't a short period of time. Okay. It was more than five. All right. More than six, somewhere around there. Somewhere around there. I don't even know. I know it was somewhere when we were at NEW. I don't like pinpointing things for people. <laughs> so, yeah. All right, I understand. But I'm just trying to make the point that it was a long relationship. Yeah, yeah. You think you're, um... You think your ex-wife is jumping up and down, excited that uh, she's going to get a phone call from you? <laughs> Sorry. Dude. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help it. <laughs> I swear to God, and I'm not even sure if I said this before on the air or off the air, if I was the guy from I Am Legend right. and she showed up <laughs> from my radio transmissions I made every day, I would push her in the East River. <laughs> Yeah. And go. I'm just going to keep trying to find someone else. But you're the only two alive. You get. You have a responsibility for this planet to repopulate it. <laughs> Let me assure everyone on the face of this earth that could be listening on many different medium that we are broadcasting out of. Well, we gotta. We gotta. There bump. is no way in hell I would ever, ever. Even come close to making contact with my ex-wife. Ever! I know. I, I just wanted to oh. see you squirm a little bit. No. No. No, it was, you know, just a kind of a thing that happens in relationships sometimes. Oh, you're 
There's no. no animosity or anything. I usually I wind up, you know, hating, hating exes. Can't stand them. But, uh, you know, there's no hatred there or anything. There's no big drama. There's no big story. No, you know, straw that broke the camel's back thing. It just kind of... Ran its course. Relationships do that sometimes. Did yeah, you, well, you know. Did it grow apart? Um, yeah, it happens when you start dating girls when they're 12. You know, they kind of get a little older. <laughs> Teasing, of course. And that, and that old, and that older thing to you is like icky. Yeah. Yeah, Anthony doesn't like old. Can I blame him? I, form. No. It, it's icky to him. It was. wasn't, it had nothing to do with old or anything. You My know. God, the girl's in her twenties. Yeah, she's Jesus. still not even thirty. But I know it, it has nothing to do with that. Although I really am not a fan of uh, women my own age. I'll give you that one. Bunch of whiny friggin' old biddies. Wow, I gotta be. I gotta. I'm, I have to be in agreement with you. When I was uh, when I was single, and my sister thought it would be cool to like set me up with like this this golf broad that was the same age as me. I'm like, wow. That's how old I, I'm supposed to be? Yeah. Did yeah. I, ever, I told that story, right? When my sister was all excited, she goes, I found the perfect uh, woman for you. And she's single and she's available and she likes playing golf. And I was playing a lot of golf when we weren't working. And I'm at uh, Crab Meadow. It was a blind date. Yeah. And this woman that should look like she was about to retire from the LPGA tour comes walking up to the putting green. And my sister calls my cell phone. She goes, what do you think? All excited because she knows I'm going to meet this. <laughs> what do you think? I don't know. Where is she? I just beat a monster to death with a golf club. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Dude. So my sister calls me as I'm putting around waiting for this girl. She goes, is she there? And I'm like, Holly, I am going to kill you. She goes, oh, no, no way. I'm like, yeah, she seems nice. But why would you think that, you know, that I would I would date someone my age at this point? <laughs> Why would you think? I love how you blurted it out like it's preposterous. Well, it is. <laughs> it is because I do have some uh, some goals and stuff. Like this this woman was like, I think she was older than me. She was in yeah. her forties at the time. I'm like, what? Here's my problem. I am in a, a state of uh, arrested mental development. I have been for many years. We all I've are. been afforded the luxury of an, an occupation where you can be immature, and it's very lucrative. Thank God, because I really am retarded. Uh, I can't communicate well with people my own age on that level. I can interview you know, people that come in. We'll have interviews, whatever. But I can't sit there at a bar and talk to a, a woman my own age and... And and be entertained whatsoever, be uh, turned on whatsoever. It just doesn't work. It doesn't work. Well, that you got to let me jump back in for a second. That's exactly what I was thinking because people are going to be like, well, what you know, I I couldn't relate to this woman and her age because I I think a lot younger, just like you, Ann. Yeah, that's the point I'm trying to make here. She was she was a lovely woman and stuff. I'm, I'm like, sure. I'm like, well, we have nothing in common. Nothing. Let's stop soft soaping it. We date younger women because they're better. <laughs> That's it. They're we're, hotter. They're more fun to touch. Their bodies are younger. Every man alive. The only men that don't <laughs> date younger women are men that can't. <laughs> Believe me. No one likes chicks their own age. None of us do. Oh, we put the soft soap in it. I'm not a boy at heart. I like young breasts. <laughs> who likes who likes 40-year-old bosoms? Get out of here with those. Uh, I've been, uh, <laughs> get out of here with those. Exactly. Throw them over your shoulder and hit the bridge, toots. <laughs> I have a young chippy to talk to. <laughs> this, this is a good discussion because I was like mentally growing and developing uh -huh. year after year. And somewhere around 25 or 26, I'm like, you know what? Yeah, I like this age. You're not in college anymore. You make a little money. So you kind of stop? I believe I stopped at 25 or 26 because I, yeah. I even hang out with some of the guys from uh, like high school and college, and I and I I could barely relate to a lot of my old friends and stuff because they're still, they're, they still think that you know music stopped after like uh, Leonard Skinner and stuff like sure. that, and I'm still discovering music and discovering cool movies, and I'm playing video games. They're not playing video games. No, the, the, a lot of them have kids too at this point. But it's so. not. I don't even know if it's about the kid thing. They just no. I mean, some, like, somewhere along the line, they just stopped growing. 
Their no, minds they stopped growing. growing. They kept growing. That was the difference. Yeah. You stopped. I stopped. He st- they continued growing. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm just, yeah, like you said, somewhere around 25, it just all froze up in my head. <laughs> you guys are giving yourself two at 25, 14, 15, and 15. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking about 25. About 25. I'm serious. <laughs> like, if I think about it, I feel like I'm still 25, 26, maybe 27, somewhere in there. All I know is we had um we had a uh, a prisoner exchange I guess you call it <laughs> over the weekend uh, yeah yeah there was a prisoner exchange because um, there are a few things because you know when a relationship ends uh, uh someone's got to move out right that's how it works and um, so where are you living no no I live in oh, my what? house <laughs> oh I live in my house <laughs> I'm gonna make that mistake again, believe me you? I live in my house uh but but she moved out and. Uh, you know, she, she packs up and takes a lot of things, uh, and some things were mine, and I guess she forgot some things that were hers over the house. So uh, I got a text, and, you know, okay, find this. I think this is here, and I, I dug up some stuff. And then there was this, like, prisoner exchange where I left it all out on the front stoop, <laughs> and then she was able to take it and replace it. With my stuff on the front stoop, and then when she left, I could open the door and get everything because, you know, you just don't want that contact. You don't want contact? After. No, no. D- don't want any, uh, like, contact like that, at least for a long time. Like a long time? You don't do that. Yeah. Yeah. If you bump into each other uh, years later and go, oh, hi, how are you doing? You know, things like that are one thing, but I don't know. But I noticed uh, during the prisoner exchange how completely immature I am because I'm, I'm putting out stuff that she needs. You know, uh, files from a file cabinet and things like that, you know, important stuff. And uh, all I was left with was, I believe it was my uh, 18-inch tall Ash action figure from the Evil Dead, uh, which oof, kicks ass. Come on. Uh, a couple of um, Hogan's Heroes action figures. <laughs> Uh, very important stuff that I needed. <laughs> and I just realized I'm retarded. I am completely retarded. There's n- now there's like n- no furniture in my house or anything. It's just... Yeah. Did she take the pink guns? Play space. No. I just imagine that you bought her guns over the years and, and they're pink. No pink guns. All manly guns. Yeah. Which now, I got them laying all over the place. I can imagine. Just buy more. That's wonderful. Andy. More guns. More guns. More, more guns. guns. More fast cars. That's my motto. Are you having a, uh, huh? you know, thing that men tend to have? A midlife crisis? Not of the crisis, but you should have had that no. 10 years ago. Been going through a midlife crisis since I turned 13. <laughs> I never liked the sound of teen. <laughs> midlife crisis, that means you would actually have some kind of emotion in your soul. I, 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 People I think did. I'm soulless. This this guy right Me? here, he's a cyborg. No. He's a I, cyborg. <laughs> when was the last time you got emotional? I get emotional. All right, when was the last time? Let me think. Um, Maybe a movie? Yeah, when's the last time you cried? Um, or just got emotional because I don't even think he cries. I'm sure he has I don't a little remember. Tears. Maybe like a little. Yeah, exactly. I don't a remember. little moisture in your eyeballs. When was the last time? <sighs> wow, that's a tough question. When when your sister uh, announced her pregnancy, did you get a little emotional inside? Like, how cool is that? No, I pretty much just <laughs> yes. thought selfishly about how it's going to affect me and You're my worst. life. <laughs> you are the worst. Every time a brother or a sister called me and said, blah, blah, is pregnant, I, you get a little yeah. emotional. Like, that's cool. Do you? Nothing. Yes! I work mm. with a bunch of weirdos, and what? they think what? I'm weird. That's what we say. Yeah. <laughs> I each, understand that. Each of us are able to say, we work with two weirdos. <laughs> I understand that. I'm not trying to say that I'm correct in my thinking, but I just want to acknowledge finally that I think exactly what you guys are thinking about me. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, you get a little emotional. Why not? Um, oh, let's see. Okay, a high stakes blackjack table at the Borgata. I cry when I lose like sixteen grand at a clip. Fair enough. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me of that. Uh, let's say hi to Scott on Long Island. Scott, what's up? Hey guys, what's up? Hey. Um, Jimmy, yes, you're sir. right. It's the beginning of Anthony's downward spiral. 
That's downward started. spiral. I'm spiraling up, my friend. That started already. Spiraling up. That started, I don't know, a year or two ago. Why Where you have s- you been? Why do you say that, sir? Because this is really going to shoot him into into feeling bad for himself when he's sitting at home, marching around, playing video games. No one's going to be there for him. What? Um, I think Anthony yeah. likes not having any attachments. Look, here it is. Emotionally, I, physically. Seriously. Spiritually. When, when, when you're with a girl uh, for a long period of time, you're in a relationship. Yeah. At least for me, it's already it's it's weird because it's kind of it's different. You're used to someone being there. You know, and and uh, but there are certain aspects that give you a, a freedom and stuff that is like, oh, okay, you know, you can kind of enjoy this. I could pretty much do whatever the hell I please. Not that I was being you know, uh, held down where I couldn't do anything. She but said, hold on, hold on. She seemed to be uh, a girl that kind of let you do whatever you wanted. So yeah. For the most part, but I think in any relationship, you got to make compromises. Sure. And uh, uh, sometimes compromise is good. Sometimes it's making concessions, which, you know, I don't think is, is very good. I like, at this point in my life, doing whatever I really please. I just like doing what I want to do when I want to do it. But you've been doing that ever since I met you. Not really. Now you're really going to do it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've had no yeah. plan since I've met you. But my plan is just to have no plan. I understand. I like it's the coolest thing you've been able to do since uh well Well it's been very recently. What am I talking about? Alright, how about just like uh, how to... about living alone? What's the coolest thing about living alone? Because everyone talks about oh god, the house is a lot bigger and I you know, you, you kind of have those feelings, but what is the coolest thing where you're in your mansion or whatever? Um, we call it the Kumia Estate. Would it be you get out because so and so's coming, and I got to wash this first? <laughs> <laughs> are you running around in your underwear, There's... singing? What What are you doing? What's what What's the coolest thing? We're like, oh wow, all right. Um, I guess just I'm blatant, talking... disgusting pornography on my huge uh, uh, monitor. <laughs> Um, you couldn't do that before? Mod. I could, but it, feel, it feels uncomfortable. <laughs> you know, you don't want your girlfriend, you know, which was cool because she, she was cool with that. She, she, you know, liked looking at porno and stuff, but, you know, I could just kind of pop it up there. She seemed to be cool and, and someone that went with the flow, so I'm very yeah. surprised that. Uh, yeah. But there were just things, you know, and, and not, not any material things or th- like, like I said before, a straw that broke the camel's back things. There's just things that happen, uh, between two people that you just kind of done. You're no longer on the same wavelength kind of a thing. And that's all it, that's all it really was. So, eh, you know, you gotta, you gotta kind of move on, forge ahead kind of thing. That's, uh, well, when you told- that's the point I'm at. I'm, I'm at the move on, forge ahead point. I'm glad this is in the open because when you told us about well, it was about a week ago, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah. I think about a week ago. Yeah, I was floored. I was like, "What? This came out of left field." Yeah, because it's because Anthony, you know because Anthony keeps everything very. I keep things uh, b- bottled up. Yeah, Anthony keeps his cards extremely close to his chest. That's and, right. And I'm un- anyone looking at my hand. And unfortunately, I play cards like this. I'm way out here. Everything. Anthony keeps things under his hat. Oh, boy, does he. Yes. So when he told us, we're like, what are you? Oh, I, I was thinking bit. I was thinking, all right, what is. No, no, no bit. What is Sid and Nancy doing now? What are they doing to me? <laughs> I, I wasn't know. that surprised, though. You started talking about little things that were happening that were different. It happens. You know, it's like, it's like a slow process. when you. you, you it is. It's up. a very slow process. And, and you know, I don't think you realize it unless there's some ridiculous blowout, you know, where something happens very suddenly and there's a blowout. It's just something that happens over time. You're right about the slow process because when I was going through the the same thing, I woke up one day and I was like, "Wow, I don't know this. I don't know this uh, this girl anymore." I'm like, "What? How, how did we get here?" Mm, and then you found uh, out you were drunk and walked into the wrong apartment. <laughs> no, I, I don't know this. I don't know you anymore. Ah! <laughs> right? Did you put on two hundred pounds since yesterday? <laughs> I remember waking up one day uh, thinking to myself, I am living with a complete stranger at this point. Mm-hmm. A complete 
stranger. Yeah. How did this happen? It'll never happen again. You gotta, you gotta, like, you gotta be aware. Constantly. Well, you do have to be aware. I think so. Did but you, did you get mm. to this point? This is mm. kind of where I'm at. Okay. Where like you're like, are we do like? Let's try to. Should we try to salvage this? Do we? Is this wishful thinking that we're in love, or like, do we just like each other a lot and not want to put? Like, did you get to a place where you both kind of knew it was done, but you were just giving like going through the motions? Yeah, but that that could change on like a daily or weekly basis. You know, you can get to a point where it's like, oh boy, you know, there's there's where where's the spark mm-hmm. kind of a thing. And then other days are really fine. You're, you're laughing, you're having a good time, and then you you ask yourself sometimes: Is it you're just kind of, you know, f- friends? Is the same amount of feeling there? In in you know the, both the same p the, you know, in each other, or is one person like the other one more? Or you, you know you just don't know. And then after a while, you, yeah, you start thinking: Is this kind of worth trying to fix or? Or just move on, kind of a thing. Yeah. Are you are you are you happy? Um. Yeah. Yeah, I am. Um. Because you know you don't want to be you don't want to be in a relationship where you're making each other miserable. You really don't. And and there wasn't just this constant misery going on. I mean, we have uh, you know some pretty good laughs and stuff like that. It just you know when when kind of the miserable part or the uh you're not really talking to each other for a length of time part now outweighs the the good stuff then it gets a little dicey now are you one of these guys when it's done it's done or is there going to be like kind of a uh i've always been my entire life a done is done guy i've never uh gone back with an ex ever Ever. That's the best way to be. I don't do it. I, I, I pretty much, for the most part, cut off communication. I don't like seeing them. I don't want to talk. I don't want to do anything. It's like over. Do you keep checking your phone to see if they texted or called? Or Well, there's been some text uh, because, you know, there's been some uh, logistic issues about, you know, moving and things and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, I, I try to steer clear of any... Uh, emotional hey, things. Do you remember Ron Valeri gave us the best advice on relationships? Unfortunately, he doesn't like us anymore. Which uh, <laughs> that's the business we're in. It's, the the it's com- whore radio business it, we're in. It's completely ridiculous because we used to admire the guy and he he loved us in our radio show. But then when he started working for the competition, he had to trash us. I don't. I don't. Mm-hmm. Really, I'll never understand that. But it happens. But we were sitting at a steak place um, uh, out there on Long Island, and he goes, "You know when." Uh, you're in a relationship, and there comes that time where you can get back together with someone that you might have broke up with or something, and you got that second chance to maybe give it another shot. Yeah. He goes, pretty much everyone will go through that stage with somebody possibly out there. He goes, don't do it. Walk away. <laughs> don't ever give it the second, <laughs> the second shot. And I believe, I can't speak for him, he was talking from experience because I think he might have done just that and, and realized what – I, I, and then you you go back and you're reminded of all the reasons why you left in the first place. Yeah, it just. Uh, but it, uh, it was interesting to hear that because a lot of people do. They kind of like they do give it another shot. And he's yeah. like, when you when you're feeling, you know, that you should give this another shot, that's when you should absolutely just, <laughs> just walk away, run, run for your life. <laughs> yeah. I never forgot that from uh, from Ron. So. All right, there you go. Anthony's uh, making it official. We've been kind of fooling around with this for the last yeah. week. Yeah. I was going to say it's a pretty s- serious thing, but... Uh, you well, it is, you, you know. You don't seem to be bothered. But it, you got to you gotta do what you got to do, you know? You can't just uh, mope around. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm forging ahead. I'm uh, continuing my life. Are you on the prowl? Meow, meow! <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm, you know, I'm taking my time. I'm, How about this? I'll dump my girl, and we get involved in an alternative relationship. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, let's see, let's see how much the listeners are willing to accept from this radio show. <laughs> Me and Jimmy arguing with each other in our little robes, exactly. two Wait. bottoms trying to fight it out. <laughs> <laughs>
But let's go with this for a second. Oh, no. You guys announced that you're an alternative couple, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, the listeners, of course, like, that would just not be acceptable to them. But but they would have an open mind at first because, like, well, I like the show. I like the show. They guys are fun. You know, they've, they, they've brought me a lot of happiness over the years, and I've met a lot of people. I, man, I actually got married just because of their damn radio show. I got oh. a kid because of their damn radio show. But then show. they got to hear shows like, <laughs> oh... <laughs> they got to hear uh, uh, breaks like, oh, oh, let me tell you what happened last night. So me and Jim, you're in bed. <laughs> right. And, and, <laughs> like, how long does it take before you, oh. your entire audience just, go, <laughs> just turns off their just radio goes, dial? Right, this is just <laughs> disgusting, man. But, but how long? You think they have an open mind to go with it for just a little while? Like, All no. Right, well, let me. <laughs> bring this back uh, they'd listen yeah, to let it. me see what I can <laughs> handle here. <laughs> let me see what I can handle. Especially so we're completely out of KY. <laughs> yeah, right. but, let me tell you. <laughs> Do you know he loves to kiss? He oh, God. loves to kiss. <laughs> make the sound you make, baby. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah, and you go, oh God, that is disgusting. <laughs> then, of course, you got the you got the Howard Stern fans just you know making fun of uh, our fans. Well, of course, you listen to that gay show. <laughs> I think they'd be understanding. But then you're like, you're trying. Oh, really getting into this. <laughs> I think it's hilarious concept. But then our listeners are fine back. Yeah, but they're still funny. <laughs> and then they have to just kind of give up on the argument. Yeah, I don't see our listeners fighting back for long. No, no, <laughs> no, no. no. <laughs> yeah, you're right. The fruits. <laughs> All right, we gotta take a break. So. Uh... I figured we'd finally talk about it on our show because, you know, Anthony just gets drunk and babbles to a, another radio show about it. That- no, it was on Leslo. Wait, I didn't just blur things out wait either. A, wait to understand how radio works. You've only been doing it for 14 years. I teased on Laszlo's show, and I unloaded it all on this show. I know how radio works. Very good. So, you know. Would it be uncomfortable for the listeners if we were doing a break and I was just kind of standing behind you, kind of running my hands over your chest? <laughs> and, like, as you're talking, they hear oh, little kisses on your neck. All right. I'm going to say two things. Um, oh. I think um, this is very good for the radio show because yeah. I think Anthony is going to just be completely insane. New now. stories. Uh, lots of new stories, hopefully. And now I'm just hoping for the black president, and this show will be number one in America. That is a black president? This, this will be the number one radio show in America if we have a black president and Anthony continues to and sing I'm for a while. And I'm just out of my mind. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Uh, very good. Uh, wow. We talked about the Oscars. Not one phone call. Talk about Anthony breaking up with his chick, and uh, the phones are just... Uh, yep. Look at that. Completely lit. We'll try All to take some lit. of these phone calls after the break. Right, uh, let's say hi to Chris. He's calling from the Poconos. Chris, what's going on? How's that heart-shaped tub doing? Yeah, it's doing great. Uh, who would ever think that Jimmy would be in a normal relationship and Ant's the single one now? Did you hear uh, the first break with Jimmy going to a, a, a subtitled movie? <laughs> it doesn't sound like Jimmy's in a stable relationship. No, we're, we're in deep trouble. <laughs> <laughs> and it depresses me and it makes me very sad. And I think it makes her very sad. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't... Oh, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just saying Jimmy's putting up with all that normal relationship crap and Ant just... You know, cleaned house. Hey, thanks for adding to your original comment. That was uh, terrific. All right. We are in and, deep and, trouble. And, and, and you messed uh, Jimmy's rant there. No, you did. I wasn't ranting. That's fine. Deep was, trouble, you think? I think so, yeah. She knows it, too. I don't know if we're just compatible. It's like no one's fault. It's depressing. Because like, you think you're like, all right, well, you just got to do this. We just got to do this to make it work. And you yeah. do that, and you're yelling at each other again. And it's like, I know you're not this big of a C. And I know <laughs> that I'm not this completely out of my mind. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Just bump heads all the time. That's what it is. Like, you, you, you find yourself saying, I know I'm not, like, I'm not a bad guy. And, you know, she's saying, I know I'm not a nag or a bitch or anything like that. And then uh, you get together, you try to figure things out, and uh, maybe you do for 10 minutes. You know, and something just happens. I think you just the the, the things you enjoy doing kind of clash after a while. Mm. Situation like that. But I don't want her sleeping with other people. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I don't mean to laugh, but Jesus. I guess that you know, is one of the uh, one of the downsides so, of it. But it's so, something you just got to deal with. And, so, bre- go ahead. Sorry. If we break up. I want to give her X amount of money a year, like if I can. Just don't sleep with other people. <laughs> like, is that okay? Like, <laughs> so you're staying in a relationship because you're scared that she would uh, be having sex with somebody else. No, no, no. I, I'm not staying there. For, like, I, I know if we break up, 
eventually she will, and uh, it will be better, and she won't look back. So I know I have to make this decision carefully. <laughs> <laughs> like, I can't just throw her out there and say, go ahead, bang whoever you want, because yeah. why would she come back? <laughs> She'll get one good one and lose my number completely. She'll just scratch me off her stupid Blackberry. <laughs> She'll get one good one and forget I ever uh. Oh, uh, wow. Oh, it's cute. He does a radio show. That's adorable. <laughs> All right. Well, Anthony uh, is officially single. He announced that this morning on the radio show. And, so I uh, was, um, uh, I've been broken up for the past uh, week. What? Yeah, I've been broken up with the girlfriend. Oh, I know. For a week. You're just making it official, though. Yeah. Yeah, making it official. I understand that. We were Given the big announcement. We were hinting toward that uh, starting last week. Mm-hmm. I, I was waiting for your lead, and you're ready to talk about it. Well, I figured you were ready to talk about it because you, you, you were blabbing on Laszlo's show. Well. Like, does this guy understand he has his own radio show and that this would be good fodder for his radio show? I, I but no. Yeah. Might as well do it on someone teased else's it. radio show. Teased Taking the thunder it. away from the big announcement when we did it. No, it was a little tease. <laughs> it wasn't a tease, radio my friend. Tease. Oh, my God. It wasn't a tease at all. He t teased me with Guinness, and I said it. Oh, <laughs> that was right. the I understand. Plied me with booze. So Get the uh, info out of me. So um, I'm thinking maybe s sex dolls for you. Uh, really? Yeah. I'm thinking no. You're thinking real live. I don't real live girls. I don't think I, I really want plastic uh, sex doll or sex toys. I had to get rid of one that was around. I don't know why. There's one in the drawer in my kitchen. I guess it came from here. I don't know how it came from. I guess it was in a bag that came from the studio, but it was a goddamn tranny sex doll. What? Yes. Was it uh, like a good one? I have no idea. I don't know what a good one would be. <laughs> good answer. But it was. No, uh, what I mean by it, that, like, uh, did it look real or was it. Very, I don't know because I didn't even unwrap it. Very plastic. But I had to take the box apart uh -huh. and run it through the shredder. And then I had to cut the thing up with scissors and put it in two plastic garbage bags and tie it up and put it in the pail. Because you don't want to, you know, people thinking e using those things. Right. Jesus. Hurt my reputation around the neighborhood. Jimmy? Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. Huh? What are you doing? I'm just going over some company policy. Okay. Ah. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. Obviously, you're talking to the lawyers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. I hear their responses. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> they look better now than they have in a long time. <laughs> uh, are you shredding a lot of things in? Uh, yeah, a few things went through the shredder. Yeah. You know, you got to shred some stuff. That helps you just move along. Cleanse the system. Cleanse the system. Cleanse the uh, environment. You know, can I bring up when um, me and you were talking last week? Uh huh. I don't think I'm talking out of line here. If I am, you just stop me because mm -hmm. this is this is your thing. I understand. But uh, when Ant and I were discussing this on the phone last week before uh, before he decided to make it official, yeah, I heard the shredder going on in the background. In the background. Oh, what the hell were you shredding? That, well, a little bit of everything. But ah, papers. I think I talked to you for close to an hour, and the shredder was uh, on. Probably the whole time. Yeah, there was a lot of paperwork and stuff just to shred. Just things, you know. Hey, I, I, I don't like shredding everything. Right. But certain things you got to shred. Certain uh, pictures have to be shred. Pictures? Yeah, because then you just dwell. You don't want to dwell. So you're... Jimmy? Sorry, let's just say there's been a mishap with the finger. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> that, that, that'll last for a good long time. Yeah. All right, let's really go to is. Marco in Ohio. Marco. Hey, guys, what's up? Hey. Hey, I have a question for Anthony. Yeah. Um, so how'd you do it? I, I just spoke with my girlfriend last week, Tuesday. And today's her birthday, but uh, I just got to know how, how you did it. What do you mean how I did it? How'd you guys break up? Oh, it was just kind of a, you know, incompatibility issue. Yeah, nothing, nothing specific came up? No, nothing really specific came up. She didn't mind uh, war or two guns or anything? 
No. <laughs> yeah, I think it was my cleaning the gun on the bed that <laughs> might have been it. That might have been the clincher. And me calling her Ava. <laughs> my membership pack coming in from the NRA. <laughs> I got the impression that she liked your guns. Yeah, she did. Yeah. All right, here's more on the sex dolls. Jimmy! Yes, sir. You all right? I'll be on in a second. All right, we're doing a radio show. Oh, good. Sounds terrific. All right. Nine different kinds of love dolls are made at this Tokyo factory. Some high-end models are made of silicon. And they are not cheap either. Her name is Koyuki, and she's one of more than 20 super-realistic sex dolls displayed in this showroom. A metal skeleton and 35 joints inside her allow her to move like a real woman. She weighs 27 kilograms and priced Much is that? 6,000 U.S. dollars. The company started making these dolls 30 years ago, originally for handicapped men. <laughs> now these dolls have become available for just anybody looking for a companion. That's, uh... For handicapped men? Ugh, just Because the they thought. can't get chicks, is that it? Yeah, that's great. Mm. Lovely. What a ghoul. He's got like a hundred of them lying around like corpses. Is They're he all... handicapped? No, he's no, just a he's... Japanese man. He says that he cannot love real women, Jimmy. So he's got the sex dolls. He comes home from work and they're sitting on the couch waiting for he him. He says hi to them. Yeah, he says hi to them and all that. Like, individually. Jerk. This guy's just a jerk. Yeah. He's a can't get any ghoul. It smells like burning plastic and like lubricant to his apartment. <laughs> Horrendous. <laughs> What's the matter with the Japanese? What's happened to that culture? Ever since they lost World War Two, I'm telling you, country loses a World War like Germany, and they get bizarre sexually. Yeah, yeah, yeah something happens. They get bizarre. I think Japan more so because they had such a different culture before the war, and then after, they get a little westernized, and they just went completely perv. Yeah. That whole thing. What I read about the vending machines that sell used panties. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's that's a that's a big that's twisted. That's a biggie over there. Biggie. They're into all that anime, yeah, porno with the girls in the little Catholic school things and those big eyes. What's that about? They're into humiliation, right? Yeah, They're just a lot of humiliation. The average, no. Who knows? It's if it's all bathroom stuff and wedding dresses and <laughs> underpants and the vending machine. Why don't you just stop it? <laughs> Good God. I mean, I'm a tell pervert, and I'm telling you, just like, you cut the margie, bub. Oh, there's the vending machine with the dirty panties. With the dirty panties, yeah. Yeah. Are, there's, are, are there different, like, styles of, <laughs> of there, dirt? Probably <laughs> are. Yeah, what is it? Somebody like, uh, like a, does some people like more dirt on one area of it than yeah. another area? You can choose what nation's flag you want the panties to resemble. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they actually want the old Japanese one. <laughs> um. Did the dance girl want a baby? No, no, no. That I told you that would have been one of those huge blowout straw that broke the camel's back kind of thing. No, mm -hmm. baby, out of here. Want no goddamn kids? I'm gonna have two, two little nephew niece things. Two. Yeah, brother Joe. Yeah. Did you announce that on the show? Yeah, I didn't tell you. It's brother Joe and Dawn. They're the ones that uh, had the baby. <laughs> uh, no, I don't think you made Some a sick, in sick, incestuous thing. <laughs> no, I, you didn't make uh, the brother Joe one official. I thought I did. No. Yeah, brother Joe. Wow. And uh, his girl. But Joe's like fifty. No, Joe's not fifty. <laughs> what is going on with the is? And his girl's like young. Yeah. You know. So. Yeah, but he didn't want to have kids. I learned uh, Dawn did want kids, but she was know. in the wrong relationship. I hadn't talked to Joe in quite a, some time about children, so uh, perhaps his, his mindset changed. That's great. Is he happy? Yeah. So, you know. You're going to have two. Yeah. Within the next year. Actually, mm -hmm. sooner than that, right? Yep. By summer? <sighs> oh, yeah. Two by summer? Yep. 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 How are you going to handle that? I'm not. You know how I'm going to handle that? But they're your... With a checkbook. But they're your brother That's and sister's right. kids. What do the little tykes need? Huh? Love. Aside from my love and companionship. <laughs> wow, man. What's up with the kid thing with you? You I watch. Just, I'm because not, we're yeah. not even talking about what? your own kids. We're talking about, like, kids that are related I won't... to you through a brother and a sister. I'm very nice with kids. I, I go You're over. Not... I no play with them. They laugh, and then I leave. There will be no babysitting. There'll be no diaper changing. I don't. Uh, and here's another thing. 
uh, if if they're listening to the show today. I don't eat with children. <laughs> I can't He's eat not. with kids. I'm not, not crazy. You're children not. are disgusting to but, eat with. But they're not like. You're, you're not at a restaurant with strange kids. These, this is like family. This is family they stuff. They ruin man. the food you're trying to eat. And let me tell you something. I got ten. You see a kid snap, slap his hand into the big plate of what you want to eat, and then no, 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 and then I look at it and go, well, write that off. I can't eat that with their slimy little hands. They're always down the back of their pants or up their nose but or something. Get out of here. But it's going to be your sister Dawn's kid. Don't care. It's different. No, it uh, no, it isn't. It's here's, no different. Here's something else. I have 10 nephews and nieces, I think, maybe more. I, I, it's hard to keep track. Mm -hmm. And um, never had a babysit and never had to change a diaper. Oh, good. You don't okay. have to do that stuff. You hold them, and every once in a while, they might spit up on you a little bit, and then you, yep. hand, then you hand the kid back. You're like, all right, here, here. Don't I, do I, that I, either. And then they mop you up a little bit, and you're on your way. Don't hold kids because of that reason. Yeah, you'll hold one. I don't want, no, I won't. I don't what? like that spit up thing. I'll hold it out in front of me. What's this about, Jimmy? It's kind of like, ugh. Um, ugh. I, I understand kids in general. Ugh. I do. I hate other people's kids, but kids that are related to, to, don't you to me, it? you just feel different. No. Yes, you should. No. Yes. They have disgusting, wet little hands that are constantly being sneezed on and, and drooled upon. And they're trying to give you their goopy Cheerios that they're always eating. Yeah. So the little, the little, the little high chair with their Cheerios on it and, and their sticky little hands. And they try to give it to you. And it's like, oh, take it. Isn't that cute? No. Oh. Do you know my friend Eric? And this is true. He has three daughters. Yeah. He came in one day over at XM. He's a comedian. He said his daughter was stuffed one time, and he actually sucked the boogers out of her nose. <laughs> He's like, she couldn't breathe. If she was having trouble breathing. Well, you'll do, what, right, all right, all right, you'll do anything right. for your kid. You're so kidding, Jimmy. Oh, no, I'm not. Jimmy, you're so kidding. I'm absolutely not kidding. I don't care if you're kidding or not. In my mind, I have to accept that you're kidding because that image will ruin me. Ruin me. Anthony. Yeah. What is it? You have no excitement that your sister and brother are going to have kids. I'm very excited for them. I understand that. This doesn't have anything to do with, with, with me. Yeah, with them. But, uh, see, I can't eat with children. But where does this come from? I don't like how goopy everything is. It ruins, like, the food. But they're going to be part of your family. They're going to be running around. They're going to be excited to see uh, Uncle when, Anthony. When they get older, it'll be a blast. They'll love Uncle you could, Anthony. You could teach them a thing or two that their parents aren't willing to teach them. You're going to be the cool uncle. And then your brother will look at you and roll his eyes like, oh, I, well, I didn't want to teach him that. Thanks. Thanks, Uncle Anthony. Well, th Thanks. that's when they're older. That's your job. Not at the snot nose age where they, you know, wipe in every friggin' thing with their hands. You get Ugh, over that. I don't like it any more than greasy you do. hands. But my nephew, I, I got very attached to. You get very attached. I didn't plan on it, and I don't like kids either. Yeah. Jimmy's uh, nephew looks just like him too. He's yeah. a miniature version of Jimmy. Yeah, yeah. He's been in here a few times. Yeah, yeah. I get you get very attached. Oh uh, yeah, a cute little tyke. Because they're family, you just give them kisses oh. on the cheek, and you don't have the. It's cool to have a kid without the responsibility because you can just play with them. Kiss them on the face. Oh, yes. No, they got spit all over their face. No, Kids' no. faces are covered in spit. They're gonna want to hold your hand. No, 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 oh, no. Oh yeah, no. they're gonna want to hold Uncle Those Anthony's hand. hand. You ever see a kid walk around the house with the hand just down their pants? Yeah. And they're walking around. Why do I want to touch that hand? It's not always dirty. It's it is dirty. A baby hand, when a baby's little fat fingers yeah. grab your hand, it is really cute. It's you can't nice. not like it. Nature puts a thing. We'll wash it first. Babies <laughs> smell good. Like when they go to the bathroom, they don't smell good. Yeah. But when a baby, like a baby's natural like baby powder smell, it's nature. So you want to hug it and, and protect it. No, I you. don't. Anthony's daycare. Thank you. I'll do your job today, too. I will. Um, <laughs> oh, no. Well, you haven't added anything to the show. Well, I don't know. He, you had did your, that, he did the live read. He did the live read for his LASIK. That yeah, he, he had his eyes done. Yeah. It shouldn't be slowing him down. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I don't know. The kid thing would use a little strange. I, I'm just dead set against it. Okay. Uh, I, I uh, enjoyed holding the hands of my nephews and nieces, and uh, it's also very depressing when you realize that the kid's uh, too old for that. He's going to an Islander game. 17. And <laughs> I, I reached out to hold uh, my nephew's hand, and oh, he goes, no. He goes, dude, I'm I'm eight years old. What are you doing? <laughs> uh, oh, how sad.
And actually, in his eyes, too, because there was a moment like, see, I'm too old for that. And I'm kind of bummed, too, to be honest with you. But, you know, I'm, really? I'm growing up. we got to, like, think of uh, new cool things to do. Yeah. And then then at the Islander games, when the Islanders score, I used to, like, pick them up, kind of throw them in the air a little bit, you know? And, like, we're at the game, and I the Islanders score, and I went to grab him, and he almost freaked out. I'm like, oh, yeah. Oh, crap. You're old now. I can't do that anymore. So now we just, <laughs> yeah. like, now we do the fist. We we touch fists. Oh, you do that. See, these oh, are little oh, things okay. you could look forward to with you know, with the little ones running around your family. Yeah. Your yeah. uncle touchy feely. <laughs> yeah, really, Ugh, creep. <laughs> Pick him up. I ad- my I adore my 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 uh, my uh, sister and brother's kids. That's nice. I like my I nephew. I adore him. I can't wait to see him. You you don't have any excitement. I'm you're not excited. A... You're excited for them, but there's you're not. I... I not um we got to find out where that comes from. It, it when you were a little kid, uh maybe it comes from uh an awful childhood mm-hmm. that I don't want to have to watch yeah. another kid go through even though I know they're not going to go through it. Because I know, you know, my brother's great and my sister's great and right. their significant others are great. Yep. But uh maybe that's it. Maybe it's just my my crappy little childhood. Is keeping me from appreciating uh, children. Hmm. That's all. I think you'll get over that. I think you will. Um, no, I don't think I will. Uh, and, and kids are just by the way naturally you, disgusting. You might be the godfather. Uh yeah, that's okay. Well, that comes with responsibilities. Uh, does it? Yeah, a little bit. I know. Uh, I have two kids. I hate everyone else's kids. I don't like kids either, and I have two. See, everyone else hates your kids. Let me tell you that too. Oh yeah, we know that. Yeah, everyone knows that. I agree with Ant one hundred percent. It goes on and on. Why don't we play Anthony's daycare going into break? It's Opie and Anthony. You love your kids, but sometimes they can be a handful. Kids are great when they're other people's. Who can you trust when it comes to your youngins? You change them, you wash them, you bathe them. Anthony's Daycare Oasis is a paradise. You're in prison. You're in baby goddamn prison. Filled with joy. We don't think they're cute. Tenderness. We think they're annoying. And most of all, Anthony's love. I can only hope your child turns up like little Adam Walsh without his head. Parents adore our staff. These guys hate kids. And our facilities are safe. I have burning cauldrons of wax <laughs> just sitting around for aesthetic. Just listen to these happy children frolic through Anthony's daycare oasis. I hate your kid, and I wish him dead. Just take it from Anthony himself. Grab your little friggin' rat and say, We love you, Anthony. Ugh. And here's my idea for you, Anthony. You don't want yeah. to, I don't, you're not the marrying type. You yeah. certainly don't want to have kids. No. Although I, I, part of me still thinks you're going to have a kid somehow, some way. You, you know something? Something might happen. Maybe uh, by abduction. It's the only way. If I ever have a kid, it's going to be followed by an Amber Alert. There's no way I'm having children. Maybe you'll have a little uh, you a are. multiracial baby. And you'll be a, an alternative dad, and you'll, and you'll get involved in political issues. Yeah. When does the ship come back from this planet <laughs> where that would ever happen? <laughs> I, <There's> no... <laughs> I see a liberal uh, a liberal future for you. Um, no. Yeah. No. Jimmy sees it, too. No kids. I uh, this... I enjoy the company of my own white people. Um... <laughs> this is my idea for you, though. I, I love collecting certain memorabilia. <laughs> I understand. This, this is what I'm and I love my guns. This is what I'm Thank suggesting you. for you. Yes. Take this as a, as a gift. Mm-hmm. Uh, make your place into the Long Island Playboy Mansion. Mm. Mm. Take in girls. Just take them in. Take them in? You like what? wayward girls? Whatever. Yes, wayward. Maybe what? wayward girls. Well, maybe I could open a home for wayward coke whores. Because yeah. they'll do anything. Yeah. Or bait. You all know coke whores will just do anything. Have some And then I'm not even trying to cure them. I'll actually supply the coke. Yeah, have some whore bait laying around. Oh, your neighborhood would love this. Just turn it into, just bring in girls that might be down on their luck, but they're hot as hell. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And start your own kind of like Playboy Mansion. But your own own take on it. With my own little twist. Your own little twist. I'm sure you're, I've never seen your house. Maybe I I will someday. Um, But I assume that it's big enough where you could kind of like, you know, Kind of like have a section where they live. Yeah. So you could still like be uh, Anthony by yourself, but then you 
Yeah, you tuck him in at night, if you know what I mean. I'll get, like, uh, bunk beds and stuff. Yeah. And put them in some of the rooms so that a lot of them can stay in uh, those rooms. Is that, well, is that the plan? I just don't want you to be lonely. <laughs> Thanks. I, I, I just don't want you to be lonely, that's all. So I'm thinking this is a, a way. Because it, it doesn't involve marriage or kids or anything, but your house is filled with uh, with uh, with human beings. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. I'll give that a whirl. I'll 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 think that over. <laughs> wayward young ladies. Wayward that are really hot. That's of the key. Oh, that's because I was saying fat wayward girls can go to a home. Yeah. Yeah. Wayward. There's, if a girl comes to the door, she's run goes, over. I'm young and wayward. And I have a drug problem, which means I'm needy. 